Good morning, 6th grade social studies. It's Ms. Flahakis back from the weekend. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. Today we have Frankie with us again. Say hi, Frankie. Say hi, 6th grade social studies. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation of ancient China. We will finish that conversation this week and you will end the week with an exam. I'm sorry. Anyway, today we are going to continue our conversation about the Mongol Empire. I know that we covered the Mongols at the end of last week. We might not necessarily remember everything that we learned because it was a weekend. Maybe we just don't remember. So we're going to recap what we know about the Mongols now in the do now. So quickly, I just want to reiterate or underscore or highlight that the Mongol Empire was an empire that was created by and run by people from outside of China, people who were foreigners. They were not Chinese. They didn't live in the sedentary society that was created by the Chinese Empire. They were completely outside of the realm of China. They became very powerful, led by Genghis Khan, if we remember from last week, and they were able to conquer a large, large, large amount of territory if we take a look back at this map, you'll see that the amount of land that the Mongols were able to conquer was massive. It covered the entire, basically the entire uh, area we call as Eurasia or Europe and Asia. And it bordered Eastern Europe and stretched all the way east to the Pacific Ocean in ancient China. <laughs> so... Um, this was a huge empire. Like I said last week, it was approximately 11 to 12 million miles. So that means that it, it was roughly the size of the continent of Africa, which is huge. So this empire was no joke. It had a lot of power and it was controlled entirely by a group of people that were not Chinese. So this was a very, very different time period for the ancient Chinese. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Yuan dynasty uh, this lesson. So... Basically, what you need to know now is that the Mongol Empire rose to a peak. It was so powerful, it had control over all this land. But something happens to cause it to decline, right? Every empire and every dynasty that we've studied anywhere throughout the world has always risen and then hit that peak and then declined. It's like a cycle. We talked about this in the early parts of the unit when we talked about the mandate of heaven and the dynasty cycle about rise and fall of dynasties. What causes the rise? What causes the fall? We've talked about and we will continue to talk about. So what I want you to consider in the do now is after the Mongol dynasty peaks and it starts to decline, right? Something happens to the dynasty. It Eventually something happens once it declines. What happens to all that land? We're talking about 11 to 12 million miles of land. We're not just talking about the size of MS-226. We're talking about a huge amount of land. What happens to that land? Who becomes who becomes in charge of it? Who controls it? And that's what you have to answer in the do not question. So make sure that you answer the question. You post your answers on Google Classroom under the do now section of Google Classroom. And then once you are finished with that, you can move forward with the video. So like I said, today we are talking about the Yuan Dynasty. Now the Yuan Dynasty is a very unique empire and a very unique dynasty within the ancient Chinese history. So we'll talk about why it is very unique and how it became so powerful. So remember, going back to that do now, what caused, what caused the decline and then what happened to the Mongol Empire once it declines. So we know from last lesson that once the Mongol Empire de declined, it reached its low, it was split in half. Now the reason that it began to decline was a lot, a, a large reason that it declined was due to family drama. Remember, we had the brothers, the uncles, all fighting for power. They were like, oh no, like I'm going to be the next emperor. Oh no, it's me. Remember, when Genghis Khan died, he wasn't like, you are the next emperor of the Mongol Empire. He just dies. So we don't know. He, no one knew who was going to be in charge. And as we know about every empire that we've studied so far, usually the family members take the place of the emperor. So that was what it was expected, but it was never known who in the family would take that role. 
So because of that, over time, this weakened the empire because the family began to fight one another. They literally fought each other. It's like me and my brother fighting over being in charge of my house. So they literally fought over who was going to rule this empire. Eventually, when Genghis Khan's uh, granddaughters and grandsons were of age to take control of the empire, things went downhill. So the family just decided, listen, like we're going to just split the empire into four separate empires so that everyone has control over something. Instead of one person getting everything, we're just going to divide it so that everyone's happy. That is what happens. Now, specifically in the case of ancient China, because that is our focus for this unit, we know that when Genghis Khan dies, this happens, the Mongol Empire divides itself, the area that, or the person that becomes in charge of ancient China, the portion of the Mongol Empire that was ancient China, was a man named Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan was Genghis Khan's son, uh, grandson rather. And he creates what is known as the Yuan Dynasty. So if you see at the bottom of the map, those are the four major empires that emerged out of the Mongol Empire. And to the far right is the Yuan Dynasty. And it covers the, the basically the geography of it is ancient China at that point in time. So like I said, Kublai Khan was Genghis Khan's grandson. He becomes the ruler of ancient China. The reason he's able to do this is because once the Mongol Empire is divided into four, he takes over the rest of China and calls it his own. He's like, guys, I'm the emperor of China, that's it. So in 1279 CE, China is now completely controlled by a new dynasty. So before, we had the Song Dynasty. The Song Dynasty fell to the Mongol Empire. Now, the Mongol Empire was not considered to be a Chinese dynasty because it was not run by a Chinese ruler. It was taken over by a group of people from the outside. Because Kublai Khan is able to conquer the entirety of China and he declares himself emperor, he begins the Yuan Dynasty. Now, that is different from any other dynasty we've studied because we know that all other dynasties we've studied were ruled by someone that was born and grew up in and lived in China. So typically this is known as the Yuan Dynasty or as the Mongol Ascendancy. So it's like the Mongols ascend to power in China. Even though this is the case, the Mongols do not try to change Chinese culture. They're pretty kind to the ancient Chinese and they create a circumstance where it's not as abusive as past conquerings have been in other places of the world. So this is a map of Yuan China. Uh, the boundaries, the red boundaries, if you see, are the boundaries of modern China. The darker purple is what the Yuan Dynasty was. So the Yuan Dynasty was a little bit bigger in the north and in the south than modern China. They had control over parts of Russia and what we call Mongolia now. And it was pretty much at its size, except for in the west. So the Yuan Dynasty was growing closer and closer to what we now call modern China. As you can see, the Great Wall is still there. It's fragmented or not entirely connected, and it does not cross the entire northern border. So there's a lot of construction that still needs to be done there. But overall, the Yuan Dynasty was strong and it was large. So what you need to know about the Yuan Dynasty is that, like I said, this was the first time in Chinese history that foreign invaders ruled over the entirety of the Chinese Empire. So Kublai Khan was the first dynasty, who the first emperor of a dynasty that was not run by an, a person that was born in and raised in China. Like I said, despite this, Kublai Khan treated the Chinese with great respect. He actually converted his belief systems to Confucianism because he thought it was fascinating. He appreciated and adored Chinese culture and Chinese language. He didn't try to go in and change their way of life. He's just like, listen, I'm in charge, but like, you're fine. Like, you can do what you want as long as you don't break my laws. 
act the way you were, practice what you were doing, like you're fine as long as you don't break my laws or try to hurt me. So one thing I want to ask you is, we I touched on it before, but I want to I want you to say it in your own words. How is the Yuan Dynasty different from any other dynasty we've studied in ancient China so far? So take a minute, think about the question, think about what you've heard so far in the in the lesson, and make a conclusion about why this dynasty was unlike any other dynasty we've studied so far. Once you have an answer, post it in Google Classroom on the portion of Classroom where you post pop question answers, and then you may continue with the video. So what you will do now is I posted a classwork assignment. It is a reading about the Yuan Dynasty. So as we always do with readings in class, read the document. With the reading, there is a, a group of questions. Make sure that you answer the questions at your level. So if you're A questions, answer the A questions. I answer the I, B answer the B. As always, same goes for every day. Make sure that when you're answering these questions, you restate all of them in your answers. And finally, make sure that you're submitting these answers to me. I know many of you are completing them and not submitting them. If you don't submit them, I don't know you complete them. And then I mark you as not doing the work. So you want to make sure that you're getting credit, especially if you are doing the work. So make sure that when you're done with this, you email it to me or you submit it to the part of Google Classroom where the classwork is, and then you will be good to go. So as well with the classwork, we always have a closing summary, which helps us summarize the main, main ideas and major points of the lesson. So use what you learned in this lecture, as well as what you learned in the reading to answer the following question. Three to four sentences, explain how the Yuan Dynasty was different from the other Chinese dynasties we have already studied. And as you can see, I included a, a GIF or a GIF or however you say it from The Incredibles, different is great. Just because it's different does not mean it's bad. Anyway, I hope you have an amazing day. As always, if you have any questions, let me know through Google Classroom or if you want to Google Meets Me for any reason, let me know. I hope you have a great day.